So what have we learned so far? We learned that if I have a variable x that has a normal distribution and a mean u and sigma, then if I if I would if I were to take a sample of size m, uh, I can actually draw something called the sampling distribution of the means, and the sampling of distribution of the mean is going to be actually normal with the mu x bar equals to mu and a sigma x bar equal to sigma over root square of n and uh, based on that we said that if n increases the standard error um, this is called standard error is going to decrease and the distribution is going to be narrower and we said that means if I want to know the the, the answer to what is the probability of uh, x bar, not x, x bar fall, falling between two values, then I can answer that question using z, the general form of z, which is equal to x bar minus mu over square root, sigma over square root of n, and then I can find the answer to my question. This is because the sampling distribution of the mean is normal, and this is in the sampling distribution of the mean is normal as long as you started with the normal distribution. Scenario number two is what if the variable of interest that you started with is not normal. So it has weird distribution, okay, but it still has a mu and it still has a sigma. Well, what well, it turns out that if your sample size that you're picking is greater than or equal to 25, the sampling distribution of the mean of x bars, of course, I mean, when we say means, it means uh, x bar, is still going to be normal. It still have a mu equal to, a mu x bar equals to mu, and it will still have a sigma x bar equal to sigma over, over square of n, meaning that you can still answer the question, what is the probability of x bar between two values using the z that we discussed? the general form of z, which is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of n. And this time I'm talking about this, this mu and this sigma right here. So even though x did not have a normal distribution, x bar will have a normal distribution, and therefore I can still use the z. Now this is thanks to a theorem called the central limit theorem. Okay, so the central limit theorem says that when your sample size is greater than or equal to 25, it doesn't matter if the original variable x has or doesn't have a normal distribution, the x bars, the sampling distribution of the mean, will be normal with a mu uh, x bar equals to mu and a sigma x bar equals to sigma over root square of n, and therefore you can answer any questions about probability of x bars using the general form of the z. So um, let's 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 do any some calculation. So if you were told um, that uh, let's start with maybe um, always blood pressure is the easiest example. Blood pressure has a normal distribution with a mu equals to 120 and a sigma equals to let's say 13. Now, uh, if you're asked, okay, so what is the probability if you take from that population sample size of nine individual that there, the X bar of these nine is going to fall between the two values that are um, 124, let's say, and, and 118, for example. Okay, so what is the probability of that? Okay, so now we're dealing with an average, we're not dealing with one observation, but we said that we know that this average come, has its own population distribution, which is called the sampling distribution of the mean, and the sampling distribution of the mean has a normal distribution. Now, how did I know that it has a normal distribution? Because blood pressure, to start with, had a normal distribution. And the mu of x bars of this population is exactly equal to mu, which is 120. And it has a 
sigma x bar, remember sigma x bar is called standard error, which is equal to the original sigma, which is 14. And I'm going to divide it by the square root of 9, which is 3. So it's 14 divided by 3. I'm just going to run a quick calculation. All right, let me do that quickly. So it's 14 divided by 3. That's 4.67. So now I can look for this probability using the Z transformation. And we said the Z that has a general form of X bar minus mu divided by square root sigma over square root of N. Meaning that this value right here is going to turn into 118 minus 120 divided by this value right there, which we already calculated, divided by 4.67. The answer to that is um, going to do it quickly on the Excel sheet. So this is a negative 0 0.43. I stop at the second decimal point when I'm calculating my z. The other z is going to be equal to 124 minus 120 and I'm going to divide it by 4.67 the answer now is going to be equal to 0 0.86 okay so the uh, the probability I'm looking for is for z between negative 0. 43 and z between 0 0.86 we already covered how to answer that probability you take the probability of z less than the bigger one minus the probability of z less than smaller one and then you have your answer now what if you had a situation where you started with a variable Again, let's say blood pressure, but this time blood pressure is not normally distributed, okay? But it still has a mu equal to 120, excuse the writing, and it has a sigma equals to 14. Here, I'm going to think about three possibilities. First possibility, if you're only taking one observation, and you want to know should the probability of x falling between, uh, let's say, 118 and 122. Well, we don't know how to answer that question. The second scenario, you're taking n is equal to, let's say, 16. I change bit the color. And you're still asking the probability, what's the probability of x bar falling between 118 122 and still we don't know how to do that the only time you can actually calculate the probability is when you're going to take n that is going to be greater than or equal to 25 so let's say you take n equal to 25 and you're interested in show the probability of x bar between 118 and 122 now here we can find the answer because that's the only time where the sampling distribution of the mean will be normal with a mu equal to remember 120 and a sigma x bar equals to 14 divided by square root of 25 yani 5 14 divided by 5 is going to be equal to 2.8 and then the z transformation becomes uh, for example for the 118 becomes 118 minus the 120 okay 120 and you're going to divide by 2.8 so you find the first z you do the same for the second z and then you can find the answer to your probability just fine